Hey guys. So, what I want to talk about quick today is here we have a Nissan 350 370Z automatic shifter. Now, I've removed the knob obviously because it's not there. <laughs> but um, I made my own version of a shift knob adapter, so to speak. Now, the problem that we have with push downs is weight. Okay, I'll be I'll be quite honest with you. So if we took something light, like one of my resin ones, turning around and having it on there with pressing this with the adapter, it it'll it'll come back up. But when you have something heavy, like a metal one, when you press it, there's not enough pressure in there to bring it up with the with the spring. Now I've researched other companies and they have similar adapters to these where they screw on and stuff. Um, they have access obviously to bigger machinery than I do. But I came up with um, this system for the Subarus as well. And all it is is an adapter that I bore out and I put a little metal piece in there as well that slides over the shaft and then you tighten the set screw. And what that mimics is, is that when it's all said and done and it's over it and it's tightened, is the, the way to press the button is just to press down on the shift knob. Now, if it was a regular shift knob that wasn't weighted, like this one is, because my spheres are weighted, you know, when this goes on, it, it, it comes back up. But... With a weighted knob, I needed to come up with a different design. So what I came up with is is a locking mechanism on it, okay? So this will go up and down just like regular. So if you get a heavier knob, um, these should be fine. My, my resin and wood knobs, right? But if you get a heavier knob, for now what I've done is, is I've made a little locking slide in there. As you can see, camera's having a hard time. But so what that does is, is that when you shift, you just have to lift up the knob and then twist it to lock. So I'm going to show you guys how to install that. So if you own a 350 or 370Z, um, I believe this is 2009 and up. But uh, I could work with you guys to figure out if it will work. But if you have a weighted knob, I'm going to have to turn around and do this design here because I don't have a spring that could go in there yet. I looked all over the place for one. I'll probably eventually find one. I'm pretty persistent, but um, the customer who I made this for, she's been very patient, <laughs> so I appreciate that, but um, I had to make something, and this is the best idea that I could come up with. So, it's pretty simple design. Uh, the set screw, you know, you just have to make sure when you're looking at it in there that it is almost all the way out and you just simply slide it over here now because of the way that this shifter is designed you can see these these little slots here so I can make this further down but the problem with going further down is is that now you're getting into these areas of it being too close to here so I took it safe and I put it up a little bit higher. But once again, this is pretty much a prototype. So you, you're going to want to put it on sideways. Because if you put it to the front, the set screw is going to dig in to that little space there. So me, I just turn around. Let's see if we get this stupid camera. There we go. Okay. I just put it to the side. Because at the end of the day, you're not really going to see that. So I just put it up to the front just a little bit. So you take it, take the set screw and just slightly tighten it until it starts to give you a little bit of force. When it does, back it off just a little bit. And then you're just going to want to press this down an eighth of an inch just so that the button, the little plastic button in there, is pressing down just a little bit, okay? So when you do that, turn around and tighten this up. When you're setting this up for the first time, don't put 
any Loctite on there. Um, but when you're ready to turn around and put it in and have it in and use it all the time, you could put, you should put some Loctite in there. Uh, the blue one uh, is good, or the red one. If I think it's the red one that's pretty hard to get off after, so maybe start with the blue one. So once you have that on there, you just want to press this up and down, and everything should function perfectly. And you want to make sure that it doesn't go into gear when it's in the upright position. Now you can get some white lithium grease, put it in the shaft as well. It'll 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 help um, ease the friction between the the two metals. But I test each and every single one when I make it, so it should should go up and down without without a hitch. All right. So on this one here, she chose this custom uh, collar so that you have a couple different colors that you could go with. So um, because everything is powder coated, you know, it fits pretty, pretty, pretty snug to the powder coat, but it all works out. And then the shift knob just simply goes on top and screws in. So if you saw there, you saw that as I pressed it down, it goes into the down position. So that can now shift all the time. And that's the problem. Because of the weight, that's the problem. But all you have to do is lift it up, and now it doesn't turn around and shift, right? So, and if you twist it, now it's in the lock position, and it's not going to go down on you at all. So if you're driving, you know, after you shift, right, now I'm in drive, lift it up, put it in the lock position. It's a little extra step, but for the customization purpose of everything, this opens up the door from me as a company to turn around and make you guys cooler shift knobs that aren't on the market or aren't available or no one else wants to make because no one wants to make them for automatics. So when you're in gear now, you can still go, you use your Tiptronic, no problem, with it in its locked position. You can still put it in neutral, right? There we are in neutral, but you can't put it into park. Or into reverse. The only way you could do that is if you unlock it, put it down, and now it could turn around and go into reverse, and it could go into into park, right? So you're just gonna have to learn the system if you're trying to reverse, uh, go, going from drive. But if you're going from, you know, let's say park into reverse, you know, it'll click right in, and you could just lock it go into reverse, and now that it's locked, you just turn around and put it into gear. So that's pretty simple. And then up you go. Uh, so yeah, that's, I, I hope that explains it. The video is running way too long. People are getting bored, but that is my way of coming up with an adapter. So any of my shift knobs I can make function like this. Uh, if you want to work with me and turning around and coming up with a different design or whatever, I'm available to turn around and do that. Now that I have the shifter assembly, I can turn around and do it. So once again, once it's installed in the lock position, right, it can't it can't go into gear. There's nothing that you can do. Your car's not going to turn around and do anything silly. When you want to put it in gear, you just twist it into the unlock position, put it into reverse if you're reversing, right? Lift it up, twist it. Go into reverse, come to a stop, shift it into drive, you're ready to go. Right now, you want to go into reverse, so you're going to turn around, do whatever you have to do, unlock it, push it down, lift it up when you're in reverse, lock it again, get into reverse, stop, lift it, put it down, put it into park, and away you go. Okay, so I hope that covers everything. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them uh, down in the comments below. You could email me at zenon at a car guy's garage dot com or sales at a car guys garage dot com or a car guys garage at a car guys garage dot com uh yeah so there you go automatics 370 z's later